you have your green bottle, your brown bottle, or your clear glass. The only thing that you want to think about is don't put any broken glass in there. It's supposed to go. Hell, might go tomorrow. Uh, sorting, and you don't want to put light bulbs in there. Bottles. Of We're about and oh, and put Pyrex into that recycled bed yeah, either. Know. But so it's kind of a little like deal, little bait deal coming product. on. Now, let's talk about metal. Metal usually go. is a What's really that? good recycling material, especially a little If somebody finds a certain bottle, used over and over again. So those they get to pick five bottles out of everybody's bucket. So oh, really? Five dollars out of everybody's bucket or just... One, one bottle out of everybody's bucket. Five bu bottles out of everybody's bucket. If you find a certain bottle, Another thing you, want to think about with you know, is aerosol cans. what, does he know what's out there or what? It, it's a damn, well, people dump garbage for years. Oh, I thought it was on somebody's property. It is. Recycling bin either. You know, you, you know, years ago they wasn't dump, you know, landfills and shit like that. You know, they just went out in the woods and dump shit. You know? Yeah, usually over in the ditch. Yeah. If you look on almost any plastic but item, anyhow, you'll see a triangle on the bottom of it. Rather make peace with the neighbor so we can cut through the yard now instead of climbing the fence. This, for example, number four, that's a good one. It can go into the recycling bin. This is a number two. So, it can go. It's easy to get to. Like this plastic drink glass. Number on the bottom of this is a number six. It shouldn't go into the recycling bin. You know, if you're confused about it, make yourself out a chart, put it up on the refrigerator, and help your whole family learn what is good to go in that bin and what's not good to go in the bin. But I'm definitely Ask going. The question, when today, I wouldn't go. I don't know. Whatever. Find out exactly we're gonna, what their rules are. Uh, and if you need to, start off with those newspapers out after every Sunday read. And you'll be doing your part to contribute to uh, the Atlantic. Well, you just ain't set a date, a time yet, you know. What about today? Huh? What about today? Isn't this I said to him that Frank so today. But he didn't be there all day. Now, today we're here in Raleigh, North Carolina. He'd be there, there. I'm questioning if the southeast is having Three, a four, five o'clock. How is it so green? Well, here's to explain to us how this yard is so green. Unless well, it's just real shitty in here, pack up the lane. Okay, so Tom, you're sort of a water conservationist because you're going to share with us the installation process of a rain barrel. But see, like that one bottle here, I give him $5 for it. You know, and people buy the fuck out of that shit. I know, bottles, yeah. And it's storing that for us to use for watering houses. I don't know about me ever. Well, I'm going to have to say, with a lot this big and a house this size, I haven't seen the rain barrels. I've done slightly rain barrels anywhere. Where's the rain barrel? You're standing on it. Oh, so it's buried underground. Correct. Okay, now here's my next question. Silly one, I know, but how does the water get into the ground into the rain barrel? We collect the water off of the roof and off of the deck. Really? Yes. So I'm looking at a deck that we've got beautiful ceiling fans and lighting and electricity. Yes. But we actually have water being stored and running down through here. Correct. We have a special system that's on top of the joist that collects all the water before it ever comes into the deck. Okay. And then channels it down this gutter. Okay. Comes down this pier. Mm. And runs down it through a catch basin and some filtering. Okay. And down the underground. 